This Veterans History Project interview was being conducted on uh, November the 18th of the year 2015 here at the Niles Public Library. My name is Neil O'Shea, and I serve here on the library's reference staff uh, as the Veterans History Project Coordinator. And I have the privilege of speaking with Mr. Gary K. Warner. Um, Mr. Warner was born on November the 12th in the year um, 1933, and now lives in Park Ridge. Mr. Warner learned of the Veterans History Project through the um, annual Veterans History Project breakfast, which he recently attended here at the Niles Library. He has kindly consented, consented to be interviewed for this project. And uh, here is his story as we follow the questions suggested by the Library of Congress for this national project. So, uh, may I call you Gary? Gary is flying. Someone called me Mr. Warner. I, my dad was Mr. Warner. I'm Gary. <laughs> Thanks, Gary. So, You're Gary, welcome. do you recall uh, when you entered the service? Yeah. I, I volunteered. The reason I volunteered for the draft, my friends were getting drafted, but they were a year older than me. So I wasn't drafted yet, but I figured I'm going to go with them, that way we can be together. But that's not what happens. When you go in, one, they go one way and you go another. Where, where were you living at that time? Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, but on the Canadian border. Yeah. And then, uh, so it, you entered, when you entered the service, volunteered in, in 52. You were yeah, about in, 19, in, in, you were 19? In, no, in 1952. So you were in, in July. In July. So you so were like I was, I was just 18, 18 at that time. I wasn't 19. So it wasn't too long you were out of high school. I graduated high school in was June of '51, and I went in the army in July of '52. So, yes. Okay. And you, uh, you were enlisted, and then we, we wondered, and then, but you joined because. Yeah, it's called volunteering for the draft. You know, when you're in the service, this guy's RA. Oh, he's regular army. I'm US. But anyone that was drafted is U.S. U.S. five five two six six three one zero. But if if I would have just joined the army somewhere, I'd be R.A. Regular people people that joined are R.A. People that were drafted were U.S. I don't ask me why. That's was there so you chose the army? Was was it ever an issue to consider the Navy, no, or the Marines, no, or the Air Force, no, or the Coast Guard? Was, no army. No, and, and the thing is, in Sault Ste. Marie, I had Coast Guard. We had Coast Guards in Sault Ste. Marie because it's the St. Mary's River where the iron ore ships from Superior bring iron ore down to Lower and to Gary to make it into steel. So we had Coast Guard there, we had Air Force there, and we had Army there. It's in a little town of Sault Ste. Marie at that time, probably 15,000 people. So, um, so you, you could sign up in Sault Ste. Marie? Oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah. then you were? Oh, yeah. And I get on the bus. The same bus that the draftees got on, that got drafted. So we went, we went together. And I think from there we went to Milwaukee, from Milwaukee to Fort Sheridan. Was there a, uh, a tradition of military service in your family? An uncle was in the Navy, uh, and that's the only one. My one uncle was in the Navy, yeah. That was my dad's brother. Yeah. So what did you, how did you find your first days in the military? Well, adjustment? But yeah, but uh, I, I was a joiner. In other words, I joined the Boy Scouts. I joined different, like, uh, I played hockey, so I joined a hockey league. So, you know, when you, when you join things like that, it's you're just joining something else, but now they're going to give you clothes and everything else. And, so, and three square meals. <laughs> was that your first time of, uh, being away from home for any length of time? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, you did. Uh, did you find you had to make a lot of adjustments? Do you know what it was? The thing is, I guess it's planned so well that you have something to do all the time. So there wasn't really an adjustment. Well, yeah, we got to do this, and then you got to go for shots, and you got to do this, you got to do that. So, no, it was very well run. It, it's like when you join the Boy Scouts, you got to do this, and, and, and this, it's all planned. See, and then um, everything the, is everything is planned ahead. And the the um, Living conditions were okay. Or? Oh yeah, yeah. I, no I, complaints. I, about the I was, no, seriously. Well, you know, they used to talk SOS. You know, crap on a shingle. That would be maybe once a month, and that wasn't really that great. But it was food. <laughs> well, 
What did that refer to? <laughs> the words? I know, but I can't remember what kind it, of food it, it, it was. It was just like chunks of beef and gravy on a piece of bread. Uh, yeah, they didn't it's full. Yeah. And they, they want to give you something different all the time, you know. Yeah. And then you were, um, uh, And you had mess chips, and sometimes you had to eat all of them, and you got to wash them when you get through. In fact, I still have my mess kits and my fork. Was that your first time in the greater Chicago area? Oh, yeah. When I come when I come to Chicago, and I walk down State Street when you have one picture with my Class A uniform, because, see, because I was in it... Uh, Artillery, we could wear a red and a red scarf instead of a tie. And when I walked down State Street, I said, Oh my God, I think I died and went to heaven. I want to come from a tiny town, you know. You drive through, there it is, that was Sault Ste. Marie I drove through. No, Chicago, I, I still love Chicago today. Um, were there any um, drill instructors or. Any what? Drill instructors or sergeants that were kind of memorable or. Uh, no. Be honest with you, yeah, well. think, no, think, thinking back, the majority of more like uh, sergeants, first sergeants, master sergeants that I went through. And and then for basic, though, I went right to Fort Bliss, Texas. So you went from Fort Sheridan, for six weeks there or something? No, no, just to, no, not even that long, but just enough to get orientated. You get your uniform, you get your clothes, and then you ship out. That's on a train or a bus? Or uh, on, a, on a train, troop train, yeah. yeah. And then? Uh, Fort Bliss, Texas. And in, in my first uh, eight, 16 weeks was our, was just infantry. And one of our walks, we had to walk uh, 12 miles out in the desert and to see how many people got to drop out and then walk back. So we did that. And, that, and that's where we had all of our stuff, you know, when you when you got to crawl down underneath and they're shooting bullets over your head and, and you're going into the gas, where the poison gas is, you got to put your mask on. This was all infantry, and after you passed, oh yeah, we had fired rifles, you know, we did everything, it was just a normal thing. And then after that, we went to the anti-aircraft, which was a 90 millimeters, and how to set a cone for, if it's, if the plane you're shooting in is 2,000 feet, 3,000 feet, you got to set it to go off at that, and you shove it in, and you blast, and then, it's like, a, it's a hand grenade to take out three or four planes. Where a hand grenade takes out just soldiers, veterans, but anti-aircraft, it's it's a, it's like a hand grenade to take out planes. You've probably seen them bursting in the sky. Yeah. It's, yeah. So with that anti-aircraft training, would that have been considered advanced training? Oh yeah. So oh yeah, I went from. In other words, when you first go in, you're like a private E one. Then you do the infantry. Now you're private E two. And then, and then, then when you start doing the anti-aircraft, but you know, I didn't get to be PFC until I got with headquarters battery 49 AAA gun battalion. So why did you, why did you, um, why were you, uh, why, why did they give you anti-aircraft training? Well, that was sort of a step beyond yeah. regular infantry, right? No, that was a step up. Yeah. Yes, in other words, yeah. every, everybody's infantry. You got to make, got to know how to make a foxhole. You got to know how to shoot. Put your helmet on and everything else. And now, some some people would choose to go to to be to be maybe be a captain or go to school for something. And this was anti-aircraft. And I see these big guns. I said, Oh my God, are they huge? And also, did you ever see a quad fifty, four four fifty caliber machine guns? And you're you got your, you got your firing pin right here in your hand, and fire all four of them at one time. That's also part of anti-aircraft. Yeah. So do you think you you must have demonstrated some kind of aptitude or skill that they put you into the anti-aircraft, right? I, I hope so, because I jumped <laughs> into things like that. Yeah. And I says, wow, yeah, that's what I want to do. So you didn't volunteer for it or suggest it; they just put you uh, into it. Yeah, yeah. How would how would you like to? Do that? Yeah, I'll do all. I want to try anything. This, I mean, I, I, I lucked in because I always say, you know, in life, timing is everything. I mean, I could have went to Korea, fifty below zero. Oh my wow! And and by the time I got through with my training, now you're talking, uh, it's almost uh, that's fifty two, and then I go to Fort Sheridan, I think, in fifty three. So 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 now they're bringing them back from Korea already. Which is a good thing. I mean, when you, but all of a sudden there's no more promotions. I got to be my private first class. They didn't promote them because nothing's going on right now. 
We're just we're just preparing, you know, to take care of Chicago, it, just in case. So from from Fort Bliss, uh, we have the basic training yeah. and the anti-air oh, training. Yeah. Then, then you were sent back to come right back to Fort Sheridan. So. And that's so instead of being sent overseas, you yeah. like, that must have been an interesting, interesting yeah. decision well, that, for your experience. Well, this, is what, this is what I'm saying. I said, well, can, can they leave, leave the country and go somewhere? No, we, don't, we, need you some, we need you somewhere else. Where? Fort Sheridan. Where's that? In Illinois. Okay, that's fine. Wherever you need me. <laughs> and all, all your buddies that were drafted. Never saw them again. Never saw them again. I said, I'm, I'm guessing some of them went to Korea. Or not. Uh, no. When I found out some of them, one couple went to Alaska. I said, well, I would love to go to Alaska. Another one went to Hawaii. And uh, they just went to different places. Germany. They did go to some went to Germany. Was it, uh, was it hard to stay in touch with your family while you were? Down in Texas. Here. Every day I'd write letters or little postcards, you know. Mom, I thought I'd drop you a line. I'd put a line down. Miss you, would love you, Gary. <laughs> you know, you, and, 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 and my mother loved me. I liked uh, fruitcake, so she managed it. But once a month, anyhow, sending me a fruitcake. It was, it was all crushed together, but it was still good. <laughs> so when, uh, when you were off duty, like off duty, was there any particular way that the soldiers entertain themselves or any Oh, yeah, in other words, whenever, whenever it hit, even, well, let's just go back to, to Fort Bliss. Yeah, because now, what religion are you? Okay, would you like to, to attend a church on Sundays? Yeah, okay. And I, just before I went in, when I was 17, I think I got baptized. My mom told me they forgot to baptize me or something, so I got baptized in the Church of Christ because my best friend that I hung out with. Carl Vert, we won the same box and we fought both and gloves together. That's what he belonged to. And he had a woman, he had to wear blue jeans and a white shirt, and then they dumped you underwater. I baptized you. And so when I went to Fort Bliss, I said, Yeah, I belong to the Church of Christ. So the, the ministers would come over and pick you up on a Sunday morning. You'd go to Sunday school, then you'd get you back. Do you want to come to, to a class that night? Sure. So then, you, then you're with people at night, it's girls and guys, you know. And, and I <laughs> you won't believe this. I think I have a picture. Here. Right here. There I was in a Battery D, 7th Training Battalion, Basic, AAA, ROTC. This was the August of 52, Army. Uh, this is a pass up. This is so I can get a pass. We needed a pass, but when you, when you leave a base, you gotta have a pass, or else you can't go. So if you could stop somewhere, this, I, I save all this stuff. And this is driver's license. So do you recall any particularly uh, humorous or unusual events? Uh, in Texas. No, you meet some pretty girls and stuff like that, you know, but you never know how long I'm going to be around. Yeah. The, the other thing that was, yeah, I, I can give you a particular, oh, okay, we're going to go into Juarez. That'd be in Mexico. Huh? That'd be in Mexico. Wow, yeah. But when you go to Juarez, make sure you take somebody with you. Because when you go to Juarez, I think all the guys were wearing, they all had knives and stuff like that, you know. And, and if you get drunk, the police will arrest you and take your money, and then they're going to call the camp and they're going to come and pick you up. So don't get drunk in the street. <laughs> no, no, that was an experience. That was an experience. And all the girls say, you know, you want to go in the back room uh, to one dollar. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I don't want to talk about that. Yeah, <laughs> the um, and so you're you're away from home and you're down in Texas and there's people there from all over the country. Did you find you mixed well with everybody? You had, you oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, I always had I always had one or two friends. Yeah, yeah. And in other words, you gotta have someone that you can chum with. And and he went. He was a Protestant. Well, doesn't matter. Well, go to your church. So so yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it, it was it, it, even today. That's like when uh, where was I going somewhere? And, and I told him, oh, I had to go to the, I had to go, uh, I had to go to a party somewhere. Oh, to uh, Four Roses, the Roses in Niles. What did I do? Um, because no, my wife's not going this year because I'm kind of a busybody. 
I said, no, put me with what? Well, I know like, three or four policemen, put me with a policeman, put me with a fireman, put me with a politician. I know them all. You know, it doesn't matter who I sit with, I can mix. Yeah. Yeah, I never have to worry about mixing, I can mix. So you're, you, uh, you complete your training in Texas and your uh, advanced training in anti-aircraft yeah. and you get the, the letter or the orders you're going, you're going to go right. yeah, back to Chicago. Yeah. And, and that was nice because when I first got there, they said, uh, I'll tell you what, we're going to send you to, a, you, you know, can you type? I said, no, we're going to send you to typing school. We need a, we need, we need a battalion clerk. Battalion clerk. Okay. So I went to typing school, and then, okay, so let's say I, after we got out, I'd go to Chicago, and I'd come back, no matter what time it is, I'd have to have my morning reports for the following day, and it was always three copies, you know, so I, you can't make mistakes. And after about two months of that, I went to the first lieutenant, I said, you know, I, I'm not, I, I don't want to be a clerk. <laughs> I said, can you send me down to the motor pool? Well, you want motor pool? Yeah. So one of the days I went, and motor pulled, he comes walking in. Hey, Warner, he kicks my foot, and I got gloves on. What are you doing with gloves? You're a mechanic. Well, I don't like to get my hands dirty. <laughs> you, want, you want to be a mechanic? Because what I did, when I said I was in headquarters battery, and I told you there was four gun sites, okay, I was kind of in charge of all four of them. Like on Mondays, I would go to Montrose Beach just to make sure. See, in, in military, we do preventative maintenance. You do all the maintenance whether they need it or not. It's always preparing to make sure everything is working. So I could spend three or four hours at Montrose Beach and then on Tuesday I would go to Niles and on Wednesday I'd go to Schiller Park. I'd go to Dog Battery on, on Friday then on, or on Thursday. Then on Friday I'd make my reports out to fill it out. Because next week I'm going to have to do it all over again. And then on, then, and, and on Saturdays is when we used to fire that was, that was interesting because I would even take a generator with me. A generator is 400 cycle generator, they're huge, because we made our own electricity and we have our own radar. And so we would go to Camp Haven, Wisconsin. I think I mentioned that to you. It's right outside of Sheboygan, right on the lake. And I make a phone call, okay, we're ready, and we're going to get a plane that's going to fly over Lake Michigan towing a sleeve. And then the radar will pick up the sleeve, let's say the sleeve's at uh, 2,000 feet. Okay, so now we take and we put this, we set the cone for 2,000 feet, we put it in and we fire over Lake Michigan. Blast them. And we do that, we did that for years. But we could never do it today, you know, all that flag is laying on Lake Michigan on the, on the ground. Yeah, so the four locations in the Chicago area were in Niles? No, Mile, no, Montrose Beach. Montrose Beach down in, in Chicago. In Chicago. Yeah. And Baker Battery was in Niles, right? Baker Battery was in Niles. Yes, yes. Abel Baker, Charlie, you know how oh, yeah. those things are. And then Charlie Battery was in Shelton Park, right off of River Road, and, and Irving Park over in that area. And then on, on Thursday was Dog Battery, which was in Skokie, which was Skokie Highway and, and uh, Dempster, just north about. Uh, two blocks, yeah. So the I had a major there. battery in Niles. Yeah. Where exactly was that located? Right where the cemetery is. It's a, almost the same entrance as you drove in, but it was way to the back. Which which cemetery? Uh, That's uh, uh, Mary Hill or St. Edward's or uh, Mar Maryville. Maryville. Yeah. 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 Wow. The, um, and before that, when we got there, there was partial, uh, because it was also Dempster Golf Course. But they had to close that up because we had a five-year lease on that property. The government did, so we knew we had, we were locked in from fifty to fifty-five anyhow. And is that when they started having these batteries in nineteen fifty, or were they there prior to nineteen fifty? Uh, I would say they started in fifty-one. Fifty-one. Yeah. So when I, so when I got there, I was right into it. it so the the military uh, we have purpose learned. in doing this was they were they wanted to be prepared in case of. Well, they, they thought, well, like, like right now, I mean, New York is free because what happened over in Paris? See, when something happens, you know what? I mean, Chicago is another life spot. It's one of the biggest cities. Man, if they could come over there and blast a couple of buildings, take over. I don't ask me why, but that's, so they, they had that. They were afraid of the North Korean or 
Russian and somebody Russian, more Russian, 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 Russian,
Uh, Cicero Avenue on Lake Street at Metal Boxing Cabinet Corporation. One of her uncles wanted me to work for him. But then I wanted to I wanted to live up near Niles because I had a house built in Niles. So then she had another uncle that was at Oakton and, and Lehigh and uh, H.M. Harper. Gary, why don't you join? Why don't you come up here? How much you making down there? A buck and a half. We'll give you a buck seventy-five an hour. Okay. <laughs> did, when you met your wife, were you wearing a uniform? Oh yeah. Where did you meet her? If I may ask. Well, I could say this truthfully. She picked me up at the corner of State and Randolph. Right. Why do you like downtown? Oh yeah, right. Because, but, but she and she, and she told me they, they they go downtown all the time. They go to Riverview and they go downtown looking for sailors. Evidently, there was no sailors around. And then there's just me and my buddy, and and, and he had a car parked underneath, so we spent a little time with some soda or something. And, well, where are you girls? Well, we'll take you home, okay? So then we went under about that and help us push to get the car started. So that's that's where you started my life, you know. And then when I got to where she lived on Latrobe. Uh, let's be park back here. Can I walk you to the door? Uh, can I kiss you good night? Okay. <laughs> was that the west side, Latrobe? Was she on the west side? Did she live La Trobe. Yeah, I love around Alston Avenue there. Alston and Latrobe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was in good, other words, that was a good distance from downtown. Oh yeah, but but yeah. where where the uh, right now the the drivers thing that was a, a stop and stop thing. We used to go there. Yeah, yeah, stop and stop. So then that night, then you had to make it back to. Uh, for sure, for sure. We were still at sure. So you had to go back into the city and get a train, but it was, right, but it was worth it. Yeah, yeah. 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 So did you? No, it, 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 it was just a great life. I mean, things just found a place, you know. Yeah. And, and I, I don't know. Maybe I, I, I had a couple other girlfriends I know. Cause one time it was with his girlfriend's birthday. I stopped at the PX. And I bought a, a bracelet and I put her name was Pat. And when I, I knocked on her door. I think I hitchhiked in from somewhere because my car stalled. And she said, I can't see you anymore. What do you mean you can't see me anymore? Well, my boyfriend's going to spread rumors about... Okay, so then I went downtown. <laughs> when I got downtown, I took this place and I threw it in the Chicago River. Because <laughs> that's even the funny thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What are we going to do with this? Go, Pat, love you, Gary. You know? <laughs> Never told my wife that. <laughs> the, um, now, after the Korean War, yeah. um, was the GI Bill still in existence? Oh yeah. So you could have, you, you I could have, yeah. Bill, but you already, you didn't have any problem getting a job. No. Because your wife's not a job. Yeah. It was great. I even I lived in, uh, I lived in a YMCA right on Irving Park Road because I had to go south. And even when I bought my house in Niles, okay, I used GI, got a GI loan. So when you were in Niles today, uh, where did you live in Niles when you moved here? Okay, do you know where Lone Tree is? I do. On Milwaukee Avenue? Yeah. Right across. The street is uh, Octavia. I live at seventy-seven fifty Octavia, and that was the first house there. And then when he finished, my built a little Polish guy built a house. He built mine, then he built one next door, then he built another one next door. And I was there from uh, fifty-six to sixty-nine. Thirteen. Did Thirteen you, years and in Niles, yeah. To Park Ridge, then. Yeah, I lived to Park Ridge. Well, it's Park Ridge, but it's you know a mile away. So I still, I'm still in contact with the people that are alive. But yeah. So did you stay in contact with any of your um, buddies from the service afterwards? Uh, well, I my my parents still lived out there, so I had to go up there a couple times. But if they weren't there, because they moved, even my one buddy. Right now, living in Arizona, the one and there were three of us on a boxing team, and one is in Arizona, Mesa, and the other one's in California. But well, he was in California. He went in the Navy because we were in the Army. This is a high school boxing team. These right? are, uh, uh, yeah, uh, high school boxing, yeah, Golden Gloves, yeah. And and at that time, we had Army up there, see. So we also had to fight the guys that were in the Army when I was only 16, 17 years old. Were you a middleweight or a No, I was banned on one nineteen. Wow. I was and, and but I weighed 124, so I, I had to dry out. I couldn't drink water for a week to get down to 119, you know. And then we we would win in a Sioux, and then we'd go to Escanaba, we'd fight somebody there. I won in Escanaba, then we went to Milwaukee. I mean, it was traveling, you know. Did down. Um, so I think I know I might know the answer to this one. Um, did you join a veterans organization? Yes. 
And, and here again, the one guy that got me the job in uh, right here in Niles, um, Oakton and Lehigh, he belonged to uh, uh, Bryn Mawr, Milwaukee, Post 36. M M it was Norwood, Zurich, Post 36. Norwood, Zurich was one of the pilots from the Second World War. I don't know whether he got killed, but the post was named after him. No one, sir, at post 36. And I worked my, you know, I, I, I sat in the back row for a while, then I moved, I finally in the front row, and now I want to be a commander of this all. So I was commander, and I still have the commander's hat, and the pin, and all that. Yes, yes, yeah. That was American? The, no, that was AMVETS. That was AMVETS. That was AMVETS. Uh, that was kind of a new group. I know there was American Legion across, but. The, my, my relatives, and I met a lot of nice people there too in, in AMVETS because they became the national commander and stuff like that. You know. And then you got to write, a, every month you got to write a little program on what's going on. I, I just, yeah, I enjoyed that. I, I was with them for years. Yeah. Um, in, fact, I, in fact, when I got married at the AMVET Hall, that's where we had our wedding. At the, at the AMVET Post 36 Hall. Yeah. Well, and all the Zurich and the Joaquin and Bryn Mawr. Yeah. But is that there anymore? I don't know. It's, yeah. It changed hands and it's something else now because my AMVET Post kind of went by the wayside. That's why 10 years ago I joined the American Legion. Yeah. Post 247 out of Park Ridge. We don't have a building. Buildings cost money. So we meet the first Tuesday of the month at the Elks Club. Six o'clock social, you know, we'll get a glass of wine, we sit around and talk, then we have a meeting. And, you know, we went from, I've been there 10 years when I was only 15 or 16, we're up to 30, 30 members right now. That's very good. <clears throat> and I just brought a guy in two months ago, Joe DePrezio. He made 31 hits from 43 to 46 in six months. He says, Perry, I shouldn't tell everybody this. We didn't have time to change clothes or take a shower. Sometimes we just get in the ocean just to get our clothes refreshed and hit another port. And he does have four stars on his banner, four major battles. So he was Pacific? Yeah, in the yeah. Pacific Army. But he was on a landing craft. Yeah. And he just amazed me. And he, we've been friends for years. I didn't realize his background because his wife and my wife playing golf for 30 years now. But he had no poster. Pulled his post folded. We had nothing folded. I said, "You're coming with me." So I, I brought him over to my post. But I got to pick him up. But that's why he lives right on Vine, a mile from me. So I drive him every every meeting. So this, when you were, you spent your army uh, days in this 49th anti-aircraft artillery. Yeah. So it wasn't a big unit, or was it a big unit? Well, we had okay. So if we had four batteries. And if we had 30 guys at each battery, so that's good size. You so know. do you ever have reunions then? Uh, a what? Was there ever any reunions? Get together? Not, to not that I know of. Yeah. It's a good point though. I, I think maybe if, if I could, I still have their names. If I wanted to instrument it, I could probably get some guys together. But but they're scattered all over the, all over the United States, you know. So um, I sense we're coming to the end of the interview. So okay. there's, a, there's always um, two questions that we ask. Yeah. 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 Um, so um, you can take your time and form your thoughts. So you, or maybe it'll just the answer will come right away. But anyway, um, how do you think your service and your experiences in the service affected your life? Do you know what? It's because everything I did, it came together. So I, I and, and I'm, I'm a believer that I can do anything and I can excel at anything. Maybe I'm bragging, but I know I can excel at anything. I am. I'm not afraid to try it. I don't care if it's selling horseshoes, or playing pool, ping pong, or joining a club. And I joined a lot of clubs. I used to be a, I used to be a scuba diver too. So. The yeah, Army was Illinois Divers Association. Yeah, I, 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 I was president of that too. And I was down 150 feet in the wintertime under the ice up in Wisconsin. <laughs> so the Army was uh, a time in your life when this, when these person, it, it, this it, idea of yourself. I hate to say it, but it brought the best of me out. What can I say? Yeah. When I played hockey, I always played either left wing or center. And, and 
and I thought it was a decent hockey player, and I fought bowling gloves, uh, and snow ski and everything. Northern Michigan is a good place, you know, but it's, <laughs> we had a we had a, we had a ski cross country to get to a hill. <laughs> yeah, I think you must have been blessed with a great constitution. I, I thank you, Dad. Probably, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yes. Yeah. And then the second question is. Um, uh, has your military experience influenced your thinking about war or about the military in general? I, I, I really think that we should have a draft because it's good for kids to learn, well, the word was military courtesy and this modern drill. In other words, it's to teach people to be a follower because you've got to be a good follower before you can be a leader. Because it's following, you say, well, you know what, there is something to be about a leader. But you've got to be a good follower to be a leader. Then, if you're good at that, what, where else you want to go? Yes, I, I think it's very important. I think we should have a draft. There's no reason. I mean, there's always, always exceptions to a rule. Okay, like even in, in northern Michigan, if you were, if you were an oiler, on one, of, on one of these carriers that brings iron ore. If you were an oiler on that ship, you could be exempted from the draft because that was an important job for military purposes also. There's exceptions to everything, you know. Yeah, we want to go to college. Well, let's do your two years and then go to college. I don't say it. I don't know. I, I, I think a draft would work. Um, I mean, not only for, I'm talking even down on, with, you know, when you're talking about the people on the south side, those kids don't know what they're doing, they're in gang. Wouldn't it be nice if they were in the service? All you're doing is setting them up and telling them what life is supposed to be like. Yeah. So I, I, I think Army life is good. Um, when you were in the Army, was there an opportunity to box when you were in the Army? When I first went in, yeah, I had a couple fights in the beginning down in Texas. Yeah. Oh yeah, I had a couple down there. I mean, because what would you like to do? It, would you see if anybody else is boxing? I'd like to go and train with somebody. You know, we could just spar if you want. But I didn't have any contests where I got trophies or anything. Even up north when I was going to they, they don't give you money, but they give you trophies and they give you jackets. You know, those are nice, yeah. Even, even hockey jackets, too, when you're playing hockey, so it's great. <laughs> Gary, is there anything you would like to add that we have not covered in the interview? Yeah, you did good. I just, no, I, I just love life in general. And that's, that's, I love people. And you know, with this, this right now, I am very dedicated to this. Honor Flight Chicago. And I'm so happy, and I, I don't have the names here. I, I still have the list. I, I signed up 30 people. Wow. 30 veterans. 14 have already been to D.C. and back. And a lot of stories they have. The one guy said when we landed in Okinawa and I saw this little boat, I pushed it out in the water and I threw a hand grenade in the water. Fish came to the top and we had fresh fish. It was really great. There's a lot of stories. And these guys are great. So I do, I do, like, I, I couldn't do it today because I had this with you because normally there's a senior luncheon today and I make sure that I go there to do the pledge. And how many veterans do we have? And they walk, and they raise their hand. We applaud them. And then I do a little dissertation from Honor Flight. And I have I have applications. When I come by, put your hand up, and I'll give you that. That's how I sign them up. I got them all signed up, just going to places. And it, it's such. And then then I'm in the, in the parade. I go to all the parades. So I walk, but I walk the parades and. Gary, hey Gary, you don't remember me, but thanks for sending me on honor flight. I can't remember all their names. <laughs> so Gary, you're, you're still serving your country. Oh, I, I, I am. No, it's, yeah. it's really, it's really great. No, it really is. These guys are, are just so tickled. The only thing is, I remember this year, I think it was the beginning of October, uh, our flight, on a, it's on, always on a Wednesday. So I call them up Tuesday night, and I'm on the phone with them. And I said, okay, John, we're going to pick you up in the morning. We want to be about 3.30, and we'll have a wheelchair there. And he yells out, I don't need no wheelchair. <laughs> I, know. I know, but we, have, we need wheelchairs to keep them together. We don't want to lose anybody at any time, you know. And, and I, he did, I did see him a month after he left, and he said, I didn't mean to yell at you. <laughs> but he understood why. 
Because even when they get off the plane, they don't just go this way. They go meet this group, they meet this group, they do it. They're just... And we have a mail call on the plane? Yes. I mean, everyone in the army, oh, I want a mail. We don't get up. You don't know mail on Sunday. Oh, okay. But I mean, yeah, we always look for mail. And but, uh, Gary, um, you're responsible for a contribution to the honor flag. I mean, yes. So, yeah. Okay. In other words, you have to realize something. Okay, I'm with Maine Township, but I can't donate money because you're donating people's money. Right. Come on, you can't do that. Okay, but I bring in like fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars every year for passports, and I took. I don't have to do passports. I took that upon myself. And when I first year I wanted to do it, I had a couple of the trustees. You can't give away money. No, no, it's money. I'm not going to take it and donate it. But I want to. I like to designate where. I think I'm bringing it in. I should be able to say, well, this should go to our food pantry. This should go here. And I think we should give a thousand dollars to Honor Flight every year. And one of the girls, her father, oh Gary, that's good. My father went, he had a ball. So you know, you know, and all of a sudden they don't stop me anymore. So it's a thousand dollars a year. Yeah. Yeah. And they come over to the office and and we give them the check and, and but but then but then it's a picture. We take pictures. Because we're all in favor of it now. That's all. You, all you have to do is sway people a little bit. Talk. It's like I, I didn't tell you, but when I went to a funeral up in northern Michigan last year, it was now okay. And up in Michigan, it's you know we're on the Canadian border, so a lot of the girls are marrying Canadians. And as my one favorite uh, cousin uh, and niece Bonnie, she married this guy John, and uh, from Canada, and. And he's got a black suit on. And I said, you know what? Can, I, can you put an American flag on you? Gary, I'm not American. I'm Canadian. I said, have you looked at a map? What do you mean? You're in North America. I, 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 yeah, I am. Okay, this is, a, this is an American flag. I might put it on. Gary, you know, I talked to him too. Much. Have you been in sales or politics? <laughs> no. no. But, yeah. And, and yeah, I carry my head, six of them in my pocket now, wherever I go, everywhere I go. And some guys, I got my, okay, last Saturday night, we go to Dover Straits. You ever hear Dover Straits? It's on the Munda line off of 45. Just the name. Yeah. Oh, man, it's, it's owned by seven brothers. Metropolis. I love that man. And you walk in there, and he grabs your hand, but then he hugs you. They're, hug, they're huggers. I got your flag. I got your flag, Gary. And you, then you go to the bar. Here, I got your flag. <laughs> well, okay. You don't have to. But what's your flag? Oh my God, I forgot it. So I have to pin them again, you know. Well, Gary, I'm wearing the thing you gave me today. So uh, you've, you've, you've uh, had an effect on me. Thank you. And I, uh, well, but I, 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 might, I might be repeating myself. You know who Mark Kirk is? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, in the beginning of this year, I think it was in February, we had him as a guest speaker at the Park Ridge Country Club. And Shar asked me to do the pledge, and I did the pledge. But before I did the pledge, and here comes Mark Kirk down the aisle, was a, uh, in a wheelchair. And, and he says, Gary, I got, I got this and my name, Gary. Gary, couldn't you pass the Navy exam? <laughs> I looked at it. I didn't take it, but I'm, I, I could have said I was drafted. I said, I'm sure I could have passed it, but would you mind if an army guy puts a flag on your, you don't even have a flag on your lapel. Oh my God. Yeah, would you put a flag on? So I, I mean, he, he's just trying to be a nice guy, you know. Yeah. He wants to be one of us, so I don't knock him because I do like him. It's Senator Kirk. Yeah. yeah. And he's a veteran. And he's a veteran. Yeah. Yes, I'm sorry I didn't have, I didn't realize. And then he told the guy, how come you didn't tell me that? <laughs> Well, Gary, I, I want to thank you for uh, for coming in today. No, I don't mind talking. This, this, is, this is my life. And there's nothing wrong. I'm, ha I'm happy with my life and where I've, where, where I've come. Yeah. You know, I, I come from a small town, and I don't think my, my dad worked at a tannery. And when that closed down, and he wasn't old enough to retire yet, oh my God, where am I going to work now? He didn't, they didn't know what to do because that tannery employed. I don't know how, if you're in a hurry or not, but when they built the tannery, they had to build a tannery and they had to build houses 
for all the people that's going to work at the tannery, and then you got to build a school for all. The, the, that's, that was the law in the old yeah, days. Yeah. This is the way it was. And, and it was also a company store mm -hmm. for the tannery. And, and my dad worked there for like 28 years. But now it got too expensive to send skins from the south by train up to Sault Ste. Marie because the tannery turns the skins into leather. And so they had to close it down. He didn't know what to do. He went out to see my aunt in Seattle, thought he could work at the, there's a Boeing plant out there or something. Oh, yeah, yes. yeah. And finally he came back to the Sioux and he worked at a gas station for a dollar an hour. Then finally he took the gas station over. So it was Lyle's standard service. Dad, and I'm still giving away your flag. He's got little three by five flags. And when he passed, I got a stack of them. So usually I have some of those in my car too, American flags. Wild standard service station. So Gary, you have to say that you, I mean, listening to you, I mean, you're an American success story. And, yeah. and it's part of it, and part of it is the, is the, is the uh, service, the military service. Yeah. yeah. No, no, seriously, they, they made me what I am as well as my father and father-in-law. Because when I worked for one cousin and I worked for the other uncle, then all of a sudden my father-in-law says, you know what, you shouldn't be working those factories. I lost my fingers in the factory. Okay, so he made me a pipe fitter, 597. So I was a pipe fitter for 40 years. I, worked, I did Zion Nuclear Powerhouse. I lived there three years. Never missed a day of work, never collected one day of unemployment as a pipe fitter, 40 years. So that's to me a success. Well, Gary, thanks for fitting us in today. Thank you for a wonderful interview. <laughs> no, my pleasure. <laughs>